We have a very diverse cast. We've got country, we've got a medical marijuana dispenser, we've got a cowboy, we've got the nephew of Russell Hans, we've got the tall jock and the young hot girls. We got a little bit in between and nestled right in the middle is Woody Allen. I've got a message from my fellow castaways. I'm probably weaker than you are, but that's not gonna stop me from kicking your asses. Right out of the gate, John Cochran said, Jeff, would you please call me Cochran? Because I like when you call people by their last names. Cochran is really engaged in the game and he gets it. The odds on paper would look horribly against Cochran. And I really think he could be that guy that wins. The guy that you go, you won Survivor? And he goes, I won Survivor. Call me Cochran. Michaela, if she plays her cards right, should be the female version of Boston Rob. She's got that same sort of Boston way about her. She's a total tomboy. She's not afraid to get physical. She's not afraid to flirt. If her real personality comes out, girls will want to be like her, guys will want to be with her. It's a great combination. It's pretty much an all-around package, so I should be all right. Albert is a dark horse for me. A lot of people are gonna look at Albert and say, ah, oh, he's a favorite. He's young, good looking, fit. He's a dating coach, got a sports background. I don't know, man. It's one thing to talk it, it's another to do it. I look around at my other castmates, I don't see a lot of threats. If Albert were off early or didn't end up in a strong alliance, it wouldn't surprise me. Christine, if we have any luck this season, we'll be there at the end because she is funny, great storyteller, says what's on her mind, does not hesitate. Her only obstacle is gonna be fitting in. Can she get in with those young girls or can she get in with the young guys? I don't know, but Christine, if she can find that chameleon inside her, she could absolutely make the merge and then really be in a tight alliance. Semhar has no business being out here. I should have probably just told her, don't. I think I make great television. Semhar should be first voted out. While she may be a great person in life, not a great Survivor contestant. She's worried about one thing and it ain't the million dollars. It's her beautiful hair. Maybe her hair is worth more than a million dollars. But out here, you can't worry about your hair when you're living on the beach. Chris Rock would have a field day with this. Rick Nelson, the cowboy, you'll know him from his hat and his big belt buckle. How can you not root for a guy who's applied 14 times? And I think he gets that these are younger people and I can't expect them to come play my game. I've got to go play their game. Edna likes to come off as the professional doctor, the anesthesiologist. I can put you under and I can bring you back. Dig a little deeper, Edna is a control freak. People may perceive it as bossy. Edna's not somebody at first glance you would think of as a flirt, but I think she is a flirt. The question for Edna, can she keep her ego out of it? Keith, big guy, 6'5", I think. A lot of people calling him Ashton Kutcher. I think Keith will probably make the merge. He won't win. I don't think he has the killer instinct in him. I think he's a really likable guy. Certainly a guy I would keep on my tribe. Physically, come on, there's gonna be one challenge where at least he just needs to reach for something. If he does make it to the end, I'll be happily surprised because I think he's a very likable guy and would be a great winner. Stacy's gonna have a hard time. That's a prediction and it's a disappointment pointing one because I actually think Stacy could really benefit a tribe. She has a different way of looking at the world. A lot of people like to talk around, maybe we should put the shelter here. No man, put the shelter right damn here. And I think that's gonna get her voted out. If there's one or two people who say, wait a second, she's actually got something going on here we should listen to, she could be a threat because physically she's gonna help her tribe. I love Jim Rice on the show. I love his candor. I love how he's gonna be in interviews. I don't think that there's anybody else on this island that quite has the background that I do. Corporate America, an MBA from Michigan, World Poker Tour champion, and a marijuana dispensary owner. He's a single guy that's clearly impressed with all the hot women out here. You can't win that way. To win this game, man, you've gotta be in the game. Elise is fun. I think Elise is kind of a party girl with a business head on her shoulders. I'm this big book nerd. I have really thick glasses. I wear my retainers at night, but at the same time was, you know, captain of my cheer squad in college. Elise has a background growing up on a reservation. I don't know how extreme that got, but if she really had to endure, then she'll be okay. If the girly girl part of Elise, which is the part that, man, I don't want my legs to be scarred for life from these bug bites. If that part comes out, it's gonna be tough. Mark Caruso, or as he's going by in the game, I guess Mark Anthony, retired cop. And I always think guys that have studied people, they've studied human behavior, they've been around a lot of liars before, they have a leg up. I would put Mark in my alliance. 
And much like Philip did, I would say you are the specialist. Your job is to determine who's lying. And the question is, will you know when I'm lying to you? Because sooner or later, I'm going to take you out. Sophie, if I had to guess just right now, one day into the show, it's going to be hard for her to fit in. You can't help it. Certain people, man, they start talking and you go, oh, wow, you're really smart. I don't want to talk anymore. I think I can come off quite blunt, perhaps slightly unapproachable. I'm not ready to pretend I'm dumb. I would say to Sophie, stay out of the way and just use your noggin like a game of chess and go where nobody's looking. Dawn has a great story in that we were going to put her on Survivor Nicaragua. And at the last minute, we went with a woman named Holly. She came back in and said, I'm so glad I didn't get on Nicaragua. That season wasn't for me. This is my season. She is a mom, so she has experience with raising kids, but she She's the really cool mom. Clearly there's a lot of young people playing too, which I love because that's who I spend my time with at my job. I think I know how I'll fit in with that group, which will be well. Brandon Hans, it is the nephew of the famous or infamous Russell Hans. When I told my uncle Russell about me being on Survivor, he kind of gave me some advice. It was pretty much not do anything that he did. Brandon is everything Russell isn't. He's likable. Your first glance when you figure out who his uncle is, Evil Russell, is to think, oh man, I cannot trust you. So he cannot let anybody know. And Brandon has a couple of tattoos, one on the back of his neck that says Hans, and one on his shoulder that says Hans. If they find out that Russell is his uncle, they'll know he's been lying, they won't trust him, and rightly so, they'll vote him out. Whitney's gonna be liked by America because she's country, she's cute, she's a singer, and she's got tats, she's a rebel. She's inked her body in an industry, in an environment where they don't do that as much. She's not what you think she is. And if she plays the game as a little demure, a little let me see what you're thinking, carrying that knife back here and pulls it out at the right time, I'd love to see Whitney go deep. People may think I'm Barbie, but I'm actually closer to kick-ass Barbie. I think one day in, we might have a very good cast for Survivor South Pacific.